Okay, so in today's episode of training tutorials for your community, we're going to talk about how to create a Square account. And Square is just one of the many ways that you can start collecting credit card payments for really practically anything. T-shirts, candidate fees, sponsorship fees, um, donations. And Square is just another one of those options out there. So today we're going to talk about how exactly to set up a Square account and how to use it successfully so that your community is not paying processing fees every time someone uses their card to pay. I'm sure Square up, Square was... So first we're going to go to the site. You can do that by just typing Square in your Google search bar or you can go directly to the site. It is squareup.com. I've also left a link in the description underneath this video. You can click on that and go directly to set up your account too. All of these ways will take you to this page that we're on right now. And what you're first going to do is you're going to click on the blue button and it's going to say start a Square account. And in order to make this easier for you on the back end, what you're gonna want before you even start is exactly this, the last four digits of your social security number, and you're going to need your bank and routing information so that Square knows where exactly to deposit the money that it's going to be collecting. So you're gonna fill out this information, and I'll just put in some dummy information for now. All right, I'm gonna save that password. Now I'm gonna go over here, I'm gonna click business because we're all running um, a charity organization or religious organization. And I'm going to hit continue. And I'm going to enter my business name. And this is how it should appear on their receipts when they go back and look at their credit card statements. And then these two things are optional. And you're probably not going to have an employee identification number or annual revenue. And then most of you guys under this, what type of business should you run? Should be clicking on charitable organization. And then hit continue. And for you guys, it's going to be everything but a brick and mortar location. There we go. So we're going to do we're going to do item catalog and customer directory. Then you're going to say continue. All right, and then we just need a name. So typically it's the name that's on the bank account. If you're the media person setting this up for the account, I chose to do myself for our community because I'm probably the most reliable person to check the emails. We have a treasurer and she's great, but you know she has a full-time job too in systems. She doesn't check things as quickly, so if I'm waiting on a verification code for things, I'd rather just wait on me and not have to wait on another person. So you'll fill out this information here. And just for brevity and um, safety of my information, we're gonna, you're not gonna see me fill out this page. All right. And then it comes the time of what type of deposit do you need? For 99% of you, if not 100%, I would say next business day deposit. And of course, you can see the difference in cost. If you want next day, it's free. If you want, or one to two days, it's free. If you absolutely need same day deposit, it's 1%. But like again, as I said, 99% of you is going to be next day because you probably really don't need that money immediately. Click continue. And then this is where we're going to put our bank information. All right, so I am set up now. I have my quote unquote online store. But now, in order to make it exactly mine, and you'll do this for you, you need to start adding the items that you'll allow your auxiliary chaws or assistant head chaws to collect when people roll up to that registration desk and have a card and are ready to pay their fees. So I'm going to go over here and click on the. I'm going to click on that, and I'm going to go over here to items. Okay. And so it has a couple of suggestions. Shout out to uh, Girl Scouts with their thin mints. But I'm going to go over here and I'm going to click create an item. And then I'm going to type what that's called. So for most of you, it'd be a candidate fee. 
and the cost of the candidate fee. I have no idea what everyone's community is, so I'm going to say $100. But you can put in whatever you want, and that's US dollars. And I'm going to click Save. Okay, first item, boom. And I'm going to do that for my volunteer as well. I'm going to do a volunteer fee. And they're probably a little bit more, right? And then we can click Save. Another pro tip is adding what are called variables or variations to the fee. An example of this would be in our community, we do a payment plan for our volunteer fees. Our volunteer payments are a bit more expensive in our community than in other communities. And that is a bit of a hard pill to swallow for someone paying that complete payment. So what we do is we set up a payment plan and I'll show you how to add that in um, the volunteer fee. So I'll just click on that volunteer fee that I just created. And I'll go down to here that says add a variation. And I'll call that a payment plan. And one payment for our community is typically $65 roughly. And I'll click done. Good. So when they click on volunteer fee, they can pay the full fee, which is $125. That's an example, that's not what our community is. And then we can do the payment plan one payment we can do $65. And then at the next team meeting, someone comes back and says, I need to make another payment on my payment plan. Not a problem, $65, boom. Clicks it, pays it, and that person's tracked is paying now two payment plan payments down on their ticket list, down on their invoice list. So I'm gonna click save. And now I can see both under volunteer fee. So that is how we add the fees. So let me show you how to add the processing fee, which is what you will automatically add to each item, and that will offset what Square will charge you for every credit card that you run. So we're going to click on the hamburger icon, and then we're going to go back to items, and we're going to click on this left-hand side where it says taxes, but being careful to note that this is not a tax, we're not paying the government this, clicking taxes. And then as you can see, I've already made a processing fee here and I made it 3%. But what we're going to do is I'm going to show you exactly how I made this. So I'm going to click on create a tax. And I'm going to just name it um, so we can name it credit card processing. Or you can name it, like I said, processing fee. And we're going to do that 3%. That's where it charges. And we're going to add tax to item price not included, add it. And we're definitely gonna say enable. And we're gonna put it all of our transactions here and available at all future locations. Click save. And I'm gonna go over here and click apply to items. And I'm gonna check all the items that I want. And really it should be all of them. And clicking apply. And then I've built out a processing fee that's automatically added anytime one of your chaws is building out basically the shopping cart for someone that wants to pay by card, which is just perfect because then there's really no math, no calculators, no figuring out how much should I charge, it's automatically added. Now, something to note, Square has different tiered pricing. If you have the card on hand, You've purchased the Square Reader, you get one free one for each account, but if you have a Men's and Women's Weekend, you might want to have two. So for like $10, you can buy another Square Reader. So you have the card in hand, somebody's handed you their credit card, and they've said, I'm ready to pay. If you do that method, it is cheaper, the processing fees are less than if you don't. So if somebody says, you know, I don't have my card on me, or um, for whatever reason, the Square Reader isn't scanning right or something and you enter in the card manually it costs more you get nipped a higher percentage rate if you enter in the card versus if you swipe so according to the site square says if you have the card and you're swiping it it's billed at a 2.75 percent rate but if you manually key in the card, or you process the card that you have saved on file for that person, 
using your terminal, which is the app, or on the computer. It's billed at a 3.5% rate plus a 15 cents fee. So that's why I pretty much settled on charging 3% across the board because it'll kind of even itself out. So I'm not gonna charge 3.5% and then I'm not, I don't even know how I would mess with the 15 cent fee at another processing fee, I guess. Um, not even gonna mess with that. I'm gonna just do 3% and across the board we're fine. And so far that has worked for our community. We have not lost any money to fees. Everything has been offset. So that seems to be working out fine. Now, in our next video, we'll talk about adding your square payments to your online forms and because I've made videos about job form we'll talk about job form first but that would be an example of manually typing in your credit card you won't have the card to scan if they're filling out their form so job form because you're using the form and using the square payment processor integrated into job form it'll be billed at that 3.5 percent plus 15 cent fee so we'll be building out the form a little bit differently so that you're not losing money if people pay their fees through the candidate or team application. Let's talk about a customer list. So we're gonna go back to our hamburger icon. We're gonna click on customers. So something that I did, and I'll blur this out. What I did was I exported our database and I imported it into Square. And here's why that helps. That meant if Aaron came up to pay for him and his wife, I could find them in the Square dashboard, swipe his card, pay for him, and then boom, he's in the system, we have his email, we have his phone, and then when I export this to the accountant and send it over, she has everything she needs to take care of giving him an end of the year giving statement. And we get to track and see how much has he spent, how many weekends has he attended. Everything's nice and clean and um, Square is really nice. You can choose to either email yourself a copy of the receipt or text it to you. Well, since we already have his information, we don't have to enter any of that in. So everything's just nice and clean. And then the last thing I'm going to talk about is invoice. Let's go back up to here, click on the hamburger icon. And then we're gonna click on this feature down here on the left side that says invoices. Not sure what happens with your group, but sometimes, every now and then, we have somebody that sneaks through and has not paid their fee. Now, I hate playing tax collector collections agency, but they do need to pay their team fee, and if they haven't communicated that they need any kind of a scholarship, it is assumed that they can pay or they will pay at some point. So, what we do and make it easier for them so they're, we're not chasing them down, we don't see them every week, I create an invoice and I send it to them. And you can easily do that by going over here to create invoice on the blue button. And because I've typically already imported them into our system, I just have to find them by typing in their name here. So for purposes of just humor, I'm going to add my mother. So I've added her, here's all her contact information, it's already all in the system. And I'm going to title this um, Outstanding Volunteer. And I'm gonna send it immediately, and it's due today because now it's outstanding. And then I'm gonna go over to our add item, and I'm gonna add one of the items that we have already built. It's gonna be our full team payment, and the full team payment plus t-shirt. And then as you can see, here's the processing fee already added. And then you can see the total here. And then, this is kind of the ton in cheek, I think humorous thing. I can set it to send payment reminders. So it, I've received feedback that it was annoying, but they paid. <laughs> so that's ultimately, and if they don't pay, they call and they say, you know, I can't pay this right now, or can you turn this off? I'll pay it eventually or, or something. So um, I turn this on just because it gets attention. It's easy to delete an email that's sent once, but it's a little bit difficult to delete an email that's sent every Monday for a week. So every seven days you can edit when you see it, or a deposit. So, hey, we need 50% now. And then in 30 days I have another one due. So just different options that you can set up for people that 
need to pay. Or you could even, once they sign up, they've signed up to serve, you can send this invoice to them before the weekend. And then they have a couple of you know, options to pay and when to pay, and then by the time they reach the weekend, they're paid up and they don't have to worry about it. So there's different things you can do. You can also store the card on file. So then the next time when they sign up, the deal is, hey, you were, you know, you're a little slow in payment this time, so next time if you do want to serve, we're going to request that your card is on file, and then we can charge it just as a, you know, assured payment. Now, that's a little crazy, and, um, you, you know, we can talk about the religious stylings of that later, but for just the understanding of what Square can do, that's another feature that I think might be overlooked and could be utilized if your community so chooses to do and then I would click send and my mother would call me and ask me what this was. And so we're not going to hit that, but that is how you would build an invoice. So that's all we're going to cover in this video. I don't want to make it too long. I don't want you to tune out. Um, but there's tons of really great things that Square offers. As I said before, you can take payments through the computer as in right here, or you can download the app, which is much easier, especially when you have multiple users doing multiple um, transactions and different payment people collecting. You can run reports, you can see what your customers have been paying, you can um, track items and see what's more popular and what's not. All great stuff that maybe you haven't been tracking before but now you can. So as always, love your comments. Please put your comments below the video with any questions. I try to respond to those in a relatively efficient manner if I see them. And I'm going to link you to the original article that I posted on the TDI.org site. Read that through, see some of the um, in-print bonuses of Square, and stay tuned for the next video where we will talk about how to build a job form form that then integrates with Square so that when volunteers or candidates are signed up, they can immediately pay their fees right when they sign up. Thanks, guys.